I have a list of items here. And towards the end of the presentation, I will also cover the kind of material you can get from eBay. The major goal is for traveling. Let's take a look at how I make the neck. There are many kinds of red balls at eBay, and I want to get the one that has the thread wires being installed. When you buy the fretboard, usually it comes for the full length acoustic or electric, it comes at around 25.5 inches. I want the scale length to be 20 -ish inches. Too small, it's very difficult to play. 20 inches is about a similar size to the Cordoba's uh, Mini guitar. And I wish I can make the width of the neck wider. Right now, it's at around 47 millimeters. If I can make it into 52, it will be nice because I'm more interested in playing the classical kind of guitar, which are, have a wider fretboard. And I cut it at this place. This is very important. Just make sure they cut it right. <laughs> After I cut the fretboard, I have around 16 more frets to play with. Because the components you get from eBay, the mechanical sizes are all different. And you lay out the tuner picks onto the outer board. The, the important thing is I want to maintain the strings to go straight uh, all the way to the bridge. Therefore, the spacing here, ideally, you make them the same, but by the end of the day, it may not be exactly the same. Because I'm using hand tool, I don't have a drill press to uh, have a better control of the drill because the me mechanical size of the components may not allow you to align the line exactly to be equal, equally spaced. Uh, or you have to move it out further, then I don't really want to move the pick too far out. So one important piece is you want to place the tuner picks on this side to be further up because when you play the instrument, when your finger touches the first fret here, your finger will be occupying this space. So allowing this one to move up a little bit will provide some clearance when you play the guitar at the around here, the first fret. Then the elder ball is about 19 millimeter thick. And uh, after you lay out the tuner picks on this side and it's a matter of uh, trying to cut it. One common way of doing it is cut a, cut a triangle piece out from here and stick that piece down here to create a bending. And this is roughly is the cut line. I use a saw to cut it. From here to here, this angle is uh, still approximate. And when I first started, I trimmed it too much. So I have to put a piece of uh, plywood to jam it up a little bit. And before you glue this one, you have to drill a hole here so you allow the, with this screw mounted here, you have to mount the screw before you, you glue the fretboard and trap the screw inside here. You put this one in and also you have to put a nut here. Again, I try to make it to be a hexagonal shape so that it would not rotate uh, once it sit inside this hole. And you can use exacto knife to cut that uh, hex shape onto the wood. Same here, you can use exacto uh, knife to cut that square shape indentation. And I also add a little bit of epoxy glue onto the nut here and onto the screw here so that it will stay there once I put the fretboard on top of the elder wood ball. 
Next step is trying to glue the fretboard onto the neck. In other guitar, I apply too much glue. You see all the glues are dripping down. And it's important to put some masking tape onto the wood here because the glue will, uh, st if it stick onto the wood, and when you later on stain it or paint it over, it, it will show some kind of marking, which doesn't look nice. So uh, putting a masking, masking tape to protect it uh, will be better later on when you're trying to stain it. And after you put the fretboard in, you have to get a file to file all the corners and uh, then apply the Danish oil on top and then your fretboard will look very nice. And you may put Danish oil on other wood pieces too, really up to you, or stain it with other color. Let's take a look at the body. I use a stub, which is a two by six by eight, but the actual width is only around five and a half. I use a ukulele uh, to help me to trace out all these curves. I put it on sheet of paper and then to create this curve. And all these are arbitrary. I just uh, use a hand to draw it to make it look good. And I also cut out some space for the pickup M. Uh, this PSO pickup depends on which kind you are getting. The size and shape are different. So you really need to decide the exact dimensions after you get all the parts. Same with the quarter inches jack and also a battery holder. Using X-Acto knife to cut a groove along here so that the flexible piezo pickup can have, has a place to go. And I sandwich it between the body and also the top cover wood piece. I use drill to drill a number of holes around the area. After I drill all the holes, I use a chisel to scrape out all the wood pieces. This picture shows better about what exactly are being removed from the block. I put all this into a plastic sheet because I know exactly where I can drill holes and mount the screws. Here I cut a circular hole, it's around two inches. Uh, I would suggest to do some, some other funny shape because it's difficult to get a perfect circular hole with, again, the limited of tools I have. And also, before you glue this top piece, you want to paint the inside of the box black. Uh, by the end of the day, it really depends on how long your screw has and where do you exactly want to locate it. Again, all this uh, reference information. One other area I want to point out is I kind of hold here. I can have access to the jack. Uh, later on, I patch it up with a, a sheet of laminate. I got that laminate from Home Depot. Those are samples and they have so many kinds. I create a spacer and this spacer uh, have grooves so that it will align the force the string to align in the correct position. I use a Velcro to tighten it down. It, it works very well. I went to my favorite store to get the samples. And this kind of tile is very easy to work with. There are other areas I want to point out here. The string can be tied to this piece of a metal bar. Using this piece is important because I will have to allow this whole bridge to shift and move so that when I try to tune the intonation of the of different strings, I what, that, what I mean is, let's say this string is at E, when I press down at the 12 bar, I still get an E uh, sound. Uh, if not, then you have to either push in or pull out a little bit to get the correct tone. And fixing one doesn't mean that you fix them all. Different string is a little bit off. So by the end, when you are done, you will see that the, the bridge is not really perpendicular to all the strings, but at a slight angle. 
the question is, what is the right angle? With the stress of being onto this piece of metal piece, uh, the pressure on pushing down on this bar is not that much. So you are allowed to slide back and forth to find the correct position. Once you determine where it's supposed to be, then you can screw the two screws down onto the base. I also uh, cut out the battery and the jack. When I purchased this unit, the battery and the jack are mounted into one unit and it's basically just too tall. I have to cut it and then uh, take the jack out and mount on the side here, amplify here. The overall thickness is too much. So I remove the bottom housing and just mount it onto the top wood. I create this uh, bracket. It is very handy. Uh, I have to adjust it so that I, I can rest my elbow on it. I went to Home Depot, I think it's a, around 40 cents. You can buy a screw around four or five inches, maybe even six inches. And you can bend it to the shape you want to. I happen to have some garden holes and those soaking holes, which I cut a, a small piece and stuff it into here. And um, this silver Silver pieces, I have a heat shrink, or you can use a drinking straw. Slide that in, heat shrink is good because you can heat it up and you can just wrap tightly around, around the screw. And I trap the two, two nuts inside this piece of wood so that uh, I can externally try to pick this position or that position. This is a piece left after I trim the elder ball. It comes from part of the elder ball I used to create a neck. The reason I add this piece to the system is trying to maintain the visual balance of the whole overall system. From here to here is five and a half inches. It's just too narrow. Adding another piece here balance also the, I look at the instrument, it looks so much better. Uh, the other one is, the piezo pickup is pretty long and I don't want to coil S shape or some, some other funny shape within the, the body. And actually part of it uh, is being buried inside this extra wood piece. Again, I, I don't want to cut the piezo pickup because it may just damage it. But I need to find a place to put it. And uh, this piece allow me the extra space and allow the PSO, end of the PSO pickup being buried inside this wood piece. I talk about this one, trying to use Danish oil. Then I'm going into uh, what do I get from eBay? I prefer this kind of tuna pick because it is structurally a little bit stronger, easier to mount onto the head and uh, the overall size is smaller, uh, allow me to squeeze the tuna picks closer together. This is the bridge, uh, it's for classical guitar. So I cut it here, I cut it here, and then I cut this piece. As you can see, I use this piece, I glue this piece on top a uh, piece of uh, metal. I trim the size of this piece and as you can see, I make it into this shape. So I have two holes to mount the screw to keep this piece stationary. You can use glue also. I, I purchased this saddle and not set. I, I don't use this one, I use this one. I pay, as you see, I pay a dollar or two dollars for it. And don't expect it will be bone. On another design, I did spend a little bit more money, a few dollars to get the bone one. But end up, they send me still the same kind of plastic. This is the fisherman pickup I got from eBay. I mentioned about trying to modify the whole battery by cutting over here to make the overall thickness thinner. And I took the 
Jack Owen Mange at the end of the guitar. The bottom piece, I, I removed it from the assembly, again, a thinner profile. Wiring is too long. I actually trim it, cut it, and resolder the wire. This is a fretboard I purchased, I think from the same dealer. And you can buy some other fretboard, but make sure that the, the fret wires were in place. Uh, otherwise, you have to buy the flat wire separately and then you have to cut it yourself. When you purchase this one online, go through their photos. They usually post many photos. Make sure the flat wires are shown on the photo before you buy the fretboard. If you have questions, please feel free to send me email or submit that at my website. The background music is from this travel guitar. Thank you.